Welcome to the Cam Girl Real World, where you get inside the minds of your favorite cam girls. Tonight on the show, it is me, Geisha Monroe, and the lovely, wonderful, and illustrious Shay BBW. Hello. You just love to sound so pure. Oh, well, I'm anything but. virginal. You just always sound so virginal. You're like, hi. Oh, God. Well, we all know that's not true. (laughs) I've never seen genitals in my life. My name is Shay. All right, so we're going to start the show today by apologizing to everybody who listens to our podcast. We know there's like, you know, four of you, and thanks guys for sticking with us. We are giant asshole oleos, and we have not been making podcasts. Shay has unfortunately been sick on and off. I'm just a dickhole, um, because I'm scared of doing podcasts alone. I need my Shay. <laughs> Life happens. We'll be back at it. Yeah, we're here. Shay's queer. I'm queer. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Get used to it. So, we're going to talk about stuff tonight. We hope you guys like it. Um, First things first, Shay, my lovely love lover, you finally have come back to the world of camming. You were gone for so long. How is it? What have you been up to? How does it feel? Well, I took a two-month hiatus to uh, work on all kinds of different projects that I had going on, and I am so glad to be back. I've really, really missed camming. I've really missed the conversations, and uh, everybody seems to be glad that I'm back, so I'm stoked. Well, you're gorgeous, and I like to look at your butt, so, I mean, of course. Right back at you. Oh, thanks. Um, I also want to talk about part of the time that you weren't camming, you were actually doing phone sex. Now, I have never personally done phone sex. I am kind of very awkward about my skill in the way of like dirty talk, but you seem like you were hitting it pretty hard. What was it like? Did you have fun? Are you going to keep doing it? Yeah, um, I am still doing it. I'm a PSO, a phone sex operator. Um, it is very, very interesting. Um, you meet a lot of very interesting people. Um, the anonymity, just like uh, as a, uh, as on camming, you know, is still there. The line that I work for actually has you call in. You can do it for up to two hours a day. And the guys that you talk to actually think that you're there talking to um, everyday women, amateur women. And so that's really interesting to me. Um, what you do is essentially you talk to them through messages and then if they want to connect with you, you connect with them. And so you have to kind of pull back, you know, the reins as you would normally do when you're on a line, you know, because they think that they're, they're talking to amateur women. It's really, really interesting. So are you getting paid per message that you're going back and forth with, or do you have to actually reel them into a phone call to get paid? You have to reel them into a phone call. And you have to make them think that you totally just don't do this for a living. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, this person or that person and, you know, my spouse is out of town and I'm just horny. Like some random woman has called this line and wants to talk to guys and listen to them jerk off. I feel like that is more like of what I could do. I feel like I couldn't, I feel like I couldn't really do the more professional end of phone sex because of my nervousness i feel like i would be more comfortable being like the kind of innocent virginal chain smoker who sounds like a dipshit (laughs) you could do that really well you know you don't get as many um people actually through the the traditional sense whenever you're actually working um so it's a good kind of supplement but um you actually can set up several different profiles and you my the what has actually brought me in most money is my sex pert advice where people call in and actually ask questions so i think that would be something that you would be great at too that is a really good point so would you mind sharing with us what the website is that you actually use absolutely it is talktome.com And then hopefully she will share her referral code or anything like that on the website once we've got this podcast podcast posted so you guys can go there and go through her referral code and help make her some extra monies because it's always nice when you guys use our referral codes for stuff. You don't have to do anything but click it and it helps us make more money. 
Um, so we're gonna we're gonna now we're gonna get back into our traditional style of our podcast. And we are actually going to start with this week's best and worst. Um, Shay has actually been back in camming for a few days, so she's actually got some best and worst. Shay, what's your best of the week? My best this week was a very funny comment I got from a nice gentleman uh, who actually said, them's proper tits. Best thing I've heard all week. Um, What about your worst? Oh my goodness. Well, of course, there's always the interesting comments that you get, such as um, a super UFO whale. Which, what even is a super... I don't even know what that is. Did, like, the... Are you... I don't... Like, are you for probing? You're for probing, Shay. I'm all That's, for probing. You're for probing. We're, they're gonna probe you, baby. Mm-hmm. Or wait, no, if you're a super... You, you're you probing them. Well, of course. That's free <laughs> reign to poke them in the butthole. This is oh, my great. Goodness. That is free reign. I also had um, a Skype show um, for a specific amount of tokens, and, you know, the guy didn't have a lot to work with, so, you know, it was kind of a smaller show, and I told him, you know, we could either do anal or vaginal. And, of course, I get in the show, and he's bitching about how he wants me to do both. So, it's one of, it's been one of those weeks, too. I just love when people are like, can I have a private where you just talk to me, but now can you get naked? I actually had one of those this week. I hate those. When they just... They are, they so want to pay the minimum, but then they so want the premium shit. And you're like, uh, no, you didn't, you didn't fucking pay for that. And now it's my turn. Yeah. Um, what are your, what are your best? Um, my best was actually tonight. I, I, th- there's an ebb and a flow to camming for me. And I always feel like the first week of the month is probably the hardest week for me. The first and the last are the two hardest weeks for me of the month. Um, to make money. And I actually had a really, really spectacular night. And I, I don't, I'm not one of those girls that really gets tipped a whole lot of tokens in a single tip. And I actually had a really sweet user, um, Black Angus come in and he, he tipped me a thousand tokens in a single tip. And he's like, because I can, and you're beautiful. And that made me feel so good because I don't get that very often. So that was a wonderful thing to hear. I know, right? Like, I don't, I don't always get that shit. So it's really nice when somebody makes me feel pretty because I get my fair share of dipshits and assholes in my room. Now. Let's hear about the worst. Oh, God. So my worst, these are actually both from the night. I'm going, we're going clean slate. These are both from the night. Um, I had this dipshit come into my room. And proceed to ask me why I was doing such a degrading thing for a living, which ab- yes, which absolutely cracked me up for the sheer fact that he's on there trolling for girls. Like, I'm so, I guess, I guess it was supposed to be like an underhanded compliment that I'm too pretty to be doing this for a living, when in reality, I have the greatest, we have the greatest job in the world. We get to masturbate and be naked for a living. Why would nope. I do anything else? Exactly. What do you want me to do? Go be somebody's fucking secretary where they're going to slap me around and be an asshole and I got to take their shit? No, being a cam girl is awesome. You can't uh, silence or ban your your uh, the people that walk in when you're a secretary. <laughs> no, and you got to deal with your fucking shitty boss's creepy advances. So it's way mm-hmm. nicer to be able to charge them extra and kick them out afterward. So we uh, uh, we actually have some questions tonight. And... um. We're, we're starting a new segment, you guys. It's called, So You Want to Be a Cam Girl? Um, and our first question is, it's kind of a broad question, um, but it came from uh, one of my viewers in my cam room, and her question was about poaching. And, and I feel like this is a really important topic because poaching really can, it, some people come in and they're very brash about it and slap dash and are just like, yeah, come in my room, my cam's on. But then there's the girls that come into your room and will slyly talk about their show and talk to your mods and your regulars and try and draw them in. And she was, it seems like she was really interested about how we deal with them, how we confront them, stuff like that. And Shay, I was curious, like, how often do you get poaching and kind of what is your plan of attack when it comes to getting poached on? Um... I get it quite often. 
it seems to be a very obvious attack. It seems to be, you know, I'm this, this, and this, wet and horny, open my cam, BB. You know? And Oh, BB. Oh, BB. Oh, BB, please. And I try to just kick or silence or anything as fast as I can because I don't know about you, but whenever I even see it in other people's rooms, I obvi- I always go to that person's room because I just want to see like how they're doing and what would cause another human being to be so desperate to come in and shit on somebody's room like that. So it does, and I am kind of, you know, not helping whenever I'm going into their rooms. Generally, it's for a second or two, but I guess it works and it doesn't. I mean, do you think that they're really going to get, like, legit followers? Or, I mean... I mean, I definitely don't think so. And, see, and I, I'm i I'm more on the opposite spectrum of it. Like, I get the bots, but when it comes to real people, I get the girls that honestly come into the room and they kind of try to sidestep into my room. And I mean, I've had times where it's the girls that they kind of don't realize they're doing it. Cause there is definite, I, I guess you could call it like innocent poaching where they're not meaning to, but they're definitely poaching your viewership and they come in and it's like, they, you know, they just want companionship. And that's part of why really Shay and I started this podcast is because we want girls. to feel like there's, there's a companionship, and there's a sisterhood or a brotherhood or whatever you want to call it. Cause there's, there's men that do this for a living too within the industry. So you can have, we can have people to actually talk one-on-one with, because we see a lot of people that they just want to have a conversation about what they do for a living. Cause you can't really share it with your best friend or your mom or whatever. So I see a lot of girls come into my room and they'll start having a conversation and then they'll start, you know, they'll start pimping their room and what they do and their, their, their good things. And, you know, what their strong suits are. And it's, it's really hard for me to physically shut people down for just trying to be honest. No. So I've, I've had to have conversations with girls about how to really respect boundaries in a cam room. And then I've had the girls that are just like blatant. I mean, there's a, there's always going to be the chick that's fucking blatant, but it's like, I always feel like I have, because I'm comfortable with girls, they come in and they kind of like silent stock poach my room because I'm so nice. And so I end up having to kind of, for lack of a better term, school girls on (laughs) school girls. (laughs) (laughs) I have to school these, these women teach them about really how to interact with fellow cam girls in their chat rooms because, and I learned this from other cam girls is that when you go into another cam girl's room, and this goes for all women, when you go into another cam girl's room, if a guy realizes a, you're a female, or B, you're a cam girl. You always say, if they try to bring the conversation to you, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Shay, or we're here to talk about Geisha. You got to bring the show back to the model's room that you're in. If if it at all seems like they're trying to bring attention to you because you're not in their room to promote unless the girl is saying to promote you. And I would still say even then, don't fucking promote yourself. Continue to bring it back to the girl's room you're in because you're not, you're, it's just kind of shady. It's shady to go to another cam girl's room. And that's why Chatterbait brought in the feature where models can't talk in other models' rooms. You can select that at any time. If you're uncomfortable with other models being in your room and talking, you can always select that feature and models can't talk. Yeah. It's downright disrespectful and uncalled for on any level. Um, you know, I wouldn't go to your place of work and, you know, try and promote myself, you know, if you had the same business, kind of think of it, you know, as that sort of thing. And camming is not an easy world. This is not a, you know, nine to five job where you get paid a set amount of hours. You know, if your room is doing really, really well and you have somebody come in and blatantly try to take your customers, not only... Can it be extremely detrimental to the room? But it's just, it's uncalled for. I mean, you know, because they get silenced. And then if somebody happens to say something about it, then somebody else says something about it. And then before you know it, your whole room has turned into this bashing session. Nobody's going to tip you when that's going on. No. Camming is such a cutthroat industry that it's it's really hard to go about about handling that situation tactfully and 
you know, if somebody's in your room and you feel like they're poaching, you can always PM them and be like, hey, you know, I'm happy to talk to you in PMs. Let me know when you come in the room. Because I've said that to girls before because I feel like they're getting too much attention. Mm -hmm. And that it definitely comes down, boils down to a point where it's like, I definitely am feeling not attacked, but I guess I'm, I, I'm jealous. I'm envious because either I feel like they're prettier than I am or she, they're younger than I am, whatever. It doesn't matter for what, whatever realm it is. They're better at me than something. And it's a detriment to my room and my ability to make my income. Mm-hmm. And so poaching, poaching is a really hard subject. And I'm sure we could sit here and talk about poaching for days because yeah. it happens to everybody. Your best bet in poaching is really to be tactful and to try and explain and humanize yourself to whoever it is that's doing it. And, you know, remind them that, you know, you have a camera room too, and you could be talking to your people and you could be promoting yourself more and you could be doing, you know, you, you're, you can always give somebody advice. Mm-hmm. It's, it's always your best bet is to give somebody advice to what extent you want to give that advice is up to you. But I am always trying to be very, very helpful with people that come into my room and need advice to whatever extent. And it can be really helpful in poaching because they might not try and come in your room poaching or because you might actually give them some helpful advice and everybody is unique in their own way. So, you know, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) I, and poaching. Um, so now we have, we actually got some questions on our website um from some people and um the first one i actually want to i want to start on this is from and this place sounds fucking made up as fuck but she googled it because we had a laugh we had a laugh we had a guffaw (laughs) about this name because i was like this isn't a fucking real place but it's a real place so this is from samantha in north hampshire uk and her question is um how do i choose a name and this is a really good question because it's really hard to pick a name. I mean, you can, you know, you you can use a username. You can fucking have me a bunch of random digits. You got to really think about it. Shay, what do you, what do you think about, how do you, how do you feel about going about choosing your name? I think it's extremely, extremely important not to use, first of all, somebody else's name in the industry. Um, you also probably should, you know, try to stay away from puns unless that's your thing. Um, because then again, you can still get in trouble for using somebody else's name or likeness. Um, also try not to, you know, put like a thousand X's and, you know, random numbers and letters or choosing a name that maybe nobody can pronounce. And they're always asking, well, how do you pronounce that? Pick something that will stick in their minds you know it can be exotic for example geisha you know that's not a a normal necessarily you're not going to hear somebody oh well what did you name your new baby geisha you know you're not really going to get that but it's something that people can pronounce people can relate to and you know they have you know that sticks in your name that sticks in your head so that's that would be my advice and and I and I I cannot stress enough the fact that you are branding yourself. This is something that if you really choose to continue being a cam girl or somebody who works in the adult entertainment industry, whether you're a porn star or a stripper or you go and work on the bunny ranch, you really want to pick a name that is close enough to a real name that you're not going to be like, "Oh yeah, my name is like Naughty Candy Bar 69." You want to pick a name that people can be like, oh, it's Shay. It's, it's Shay BBW. It specifically says like her name is Shay and she's a BBW. It's like, it's a perfect name because it's, it's a real name. It's easy to pronounce, like you said, and it's unique. Now you don't have to necessarily pick the most fucking unique name. Your name doesn't need to be, you know, Faniqua Bonchachi or something. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to pick, like, the craziest name you can think of. Your name can be, like, Jessica fucking Brown. I don't know what the fuck your name's gonna be. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't help you, but you gotta, <laughs> you, you gotta wanna pick something that you like and that is simple enough for you to be able to deal with and for your fans to be able to deal with. So you really wanna think about the longevity of your name. So no fucking Nancy Candy Bar Sugar Pants, guys. Just like fucking... Don't do it. 
It's going that's gonna be a screening on Chatterbait next week is Nancy Candy Bar Sugar Pants. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't fucking do it. Um So this question came from Anonymous. Somebody didn't want to share their fucking information with us. Pussy. 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 <laughs> Um, and their question is, I just started camming and I am wondering if I should quit my day job. No. Yeah. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen that listen to our podcast. Camming, you know, it seems like a great idea. And if you can make enough money that you really feel like you can substantiate and live off of and, and pay your bills with, fucking fantastic. But my best suggestion to you is... Really give it three months. I mean, at least three months before you really give up your day job. You want to kind of fill out your time schedule. You want to fill out your your users. You want to give kind of your viewers a time to ebb and flow so you can really see if they're going to stay, if you're going to be able to continue to bring in the same amount of money that you brought in your first week because everybody's first week is going to be the best week of their cam career. Yes. You're, You're... going to make the most money you'll ever make when you are a brand new cam model. It's good. You've got that brand new car smell. Your mm-hmm. butt is as fresh as a baby's butt. Oh my God, you're perfect and you could do nothing wrong. But once you get out of that first week, it's going to start to fall off. You're going to see, you're going to see a loss really in your income. And so you want to make sure that you can get to a point where it's leveled out and you can really see what your earnings are because you might not really want to cam eight hours a day. It You may really just want to do it as a part-time thing where you have fun and you got extra fucking shoe money. I don't know what your lifestyle is, <laughs> but yeah, but you, you know, you want to be really careful about jumping into this career um, and be careful and really find a cam site that you actually like. That's part of it too, is you got to find a cam site that fits your needs. You got to find a, a fan base. If you, if you, you got to have kind of a tough skin, really, to be in this a industry. very tough skin. We always talk about our best and our worst. Some weeks we don't have a best. Some weeks all we have is a worst, and we really got to pick to figure out what our best is. So you've got to have a tough skin. If you don't have that natural tough skin, then you're going to need time to build it. I know whenever I first started camming, you know, two or three days a week, I would get off cam because I was just, I would just cry and cry and cry. And, you know... You're going to want to give yourself time to kind of build that skin. Some people just kind of naturally have it, but don't worry. You will build it. You will start to understand that people are assholes just to be assholes. The other thing is, is most sites will give you a little tag next to your name that says new. And Which can help you or fucking hurt you. So don't be the fucking new girl. If you start on a brand new website, check out the girls. Find the nice ones. You guys are always welcome to come into my room if you're going to work on any site where I work on. And please ask me questions about the protocol, how things work, how long you can leave cam, what's okay and what's not okay, and what the regular clientele really acts like. Nice girls will answer those questions for you. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, too, you know, we're not all Katie Cat. I said it. You know, <laughs> most of the time it takes years of hard work and dedication to be able to build and build and build enough fan base and to kind of mold yourself into what you're going to be and to figure out what people like and how to monopolize capitalize on that. Um, You're not going to get that. I mean, I don't want to burst your bubble, but no matter how hard (laughs) you throw yourself at camming in the beginning, you're not going to be getting, you know, 5,000 viewers and 40,000 tokens a day. It's not going to happen. It's not realistic. And if you really think that you're going to make that much being a cam girl, you are better off getting your ass to a porn company or getting yourself an agent and actually working in the adult entertainment industry as a porn star or a stripper because you'll make tenfold what you would make actually doing this if you really think you're that hot of shit. And I'm not saying that to be derogatory, but I mean, if you fucking know you're hot, Please be a porn star and really, really do it because you're just fucking over the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking over the rest of us. Um. So yeah, don't fucking please don't quit your day job. Not not for us, but for you. 
you really, it's, it, you will, I, I have friends that have cammed and they've gotten fucked over and had to move a shitload of times because they gave up their day job. So be really, really careful. Don't go shitting on your fucking boss's desk because you fucking made like a thousand dollars last week. It may not last. Right. It's a bad idea to shit on your boss's desk. Um, yeah. So let's go to... Our next question. Our next question is from uh, Rebecca in Chicago. And her question is, what do I need to start camming? Ah. And, and, and this is a really, this is a really good question just because a lot of people assume, oh, well, my computer has a built-in webcam and of course it has a microphone and I can just go for it. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. And I mean, that's, okay if this is a hobby but i mean and shay what do you what do you what's your what's your basic setup what's your basic day-to-day what you have to have for a successful cam show um lighting is very important you need to have when you think you have too many lights double it the more lights you have the better um you need to hone your makeup skills and geisha will give you a makeup tutorial, not for free, but uh, she can help <laughs> you with that. She's definitely stepped up my makeup game. And um, you need toys. Or you need to know what you're doing. So you need to either, well, my shtick is non-nude or my shtick is only fingers, you know. And um, I think that's that would be bare minimum. You also need to be able to step away from your webcam um, to be able to show your whole body. You have to think, if you just have your webcam on a laptop, you know, sitting on your bed, what all are they going to be seeing? You know, you need to be able to put your webcam in different angles or zoom in or zoom out so that they can see different parts of you. I And I, and I definitely agree with all those. You also really want to make sure that when you're first starting, you really kind of want a very blank slate. And I, and I am the worst person to be like, yeah, a fucking white wall. Cause if you know me and if you've ever been in my room, I got a fucking TARDIS. I got like 16 pictures on the wall. I got Christmas lights and I got fake stuffed goddamn dead animals on my wall. But I've been doing this for long enough that I kind of know I'm going for the weird and boisterous. But I really would say that your first time camming, you want as blank of a canvas as physically possible. Always make sure your bed is made. I know that's kind of a really weird thing for a lot of us. When I first started camming, I never had my bed made. And somebody called me out on it and they said, you're from America, aren't you? And I said, how did you know? Because I literally had it, hadn't said anything since I came in the room. And they said, your bed's not made. And so it's it's one of those things where you you want to have a really tidy appearance and that's something you can do for free is make sure you have a tidy appearance in your room. Lighting, like Shay said, is top. I mean, if you got to save up for a little bit to get yourself a nice lighting rig or just position your, your, your bed or whatever you're camming on so that it faces a window and you cam during the day, you really want to, you want to highlight your strong suits and having good lighting and a clean background are really, really important. I would also really like to stress the Amazon wish list. If you don't have any toys and you're just doing fingers or whatever, get your wish list up. Sit there on wish list on your on Amazon for a couple hours and find some sex toys and some laundry and some stuff you really like. So at least when you start camming and people say, "Do you have any toys?" you can go, "No, but I have an Amazon wish list and I would really like some toys off of this to help make my show better." Something to add to that, too, is if you don't even know where to start when it comes to toys, I would highly suggest going into different models' rooms, clicking on their wish list, and you can see so many things that you would have never even thought of in your wildest dreams that you go, oh, I have to have that. You know, so those are great ways to do that, too. And... And you really... The thing with a lot of internal webcams and microphones is they aren't the best, they're really not good quality. I mean, even for today's standards, they're just not very good quality. So those would be two things I would put on your Amazon wish list. I can't stress enough a Logitech. Uh, I think it's a C920. Um, those are pretty much top of the line. Logitech makes really the best cameras in the business. Um, the longer you're in the industry, if you really end up liking it, um, you can get yourself into the upper echelon webcams. I personally use a Logitech conference cam. It has a remote. It works fantastic. But 
I spent two years on a Logitech C920 before I stepped up to the conference cam because it's a big investment and you really got to know you're doing this for a living. I also can't stress enough getting a good microphone. Um, Shay and I actually both use blue snowballs for our microphones and they're not terribly expensive and they work fantastic. It's a really good sound quality and it can be a lot better than the microphone that actually exists on your laptop because your laptop microphone, it tends, it tends to carry a lot of humming. If your fans turn on, if your fans turn off, I mean, I know that if I forget to actually make sure that my settings are proper and it's my microphone on my laptop, it sounds like a cow mooing. Yeah. Everybody that comes in the room is like, do you live near a farm? And I'm like, what are you talking about? So you really want to do the best that you can. Like if you just started camming and you've made enough money, like put that money towards investing in yourself just a little bit really on the visual, the visual and the audio spectrum, because that will do a lot more than you think for your show. And also, you know, you can have the top of the line camera and the top of the line mic. You can have somebody do your makeup and your hair and have every toy in the industry. But if you don't have a good internet connection, then you're fucked. Spend the extra money. If that means shutting off the cable and just getting, you know, internet, if that's really, you know, if you really want to cam, get good internet. Absolutely. It's worth every penny. And, and hardline it. A fucking ethernet cable will not cost you more than like $15 at yep. Staples or on Amazon. And hardwire your shit straight into your modem because it... <sighs> Wi-Fi is for fucking emergencies or if you're doing a goddamn kitchen show. I swear to God. The, Wi-Fi is a special occasion type thing when you're doing something cool and you can really bring pe people into the room. Otherwise, hardline your shit. My last apartment, I had two 25-foot cables... Daisy chained into another another router so that I was always hardlined, and that made a huge difference. Yeah, and and you will know if you don't do it, it will come back to bite you. You'll be in the middle of a cum show, or somebody will just tip you for something, and then bam, you're gone. And then who's the asshole? Yeah, and it's you. You're the fucking dick that you couldn't keep your show running. And so now we have we have our last question sad our last question so our last question is from bertha in texas that doesn't even sound real no it doesn't no that doesn't <laughs> even sound real who the fuck who the fuck emailed us with the name bertha in texas you are a kidder we don't even know what to do with you motherfucker um and so their question is, should I make a cam persona or should I be myself? Ooh. Do you want me to start this one? Yeah, why don't you start this one? Okay. So I actually think this is a really, I think this is a really interesting question. Um, because I, I started camming with a persona and, and my persona was, I, I was interesting and different and weird. I mean, that's basically me in a nutshell, but what I mean by that is I kind of didn't stick to one persona. I was kind of fleeting between these different personas to try and figure out where I fit in. And in doing that, I sort of figured out that the best thing for me personally is for the most part, I'm myself, but then to a certain extent, I'm a little bit extra and I'm not really that much. I'm, I'm really kind of a, I'm not boring but I am, I'm a really, I'm a relatively normal human being. I know I seem so exciting and interesting, <laughs> um, but I'm a relatively boring individual. I mean, I don't like, I mean, I like being funny to people, but I'm, I don't know. I'm not terribly exciting, um, in the realm of my personality besides the weird shit I like. And so I sort of bring kind of like I do to our podcast is, you know, the fun radio announcer that's crazy and says weird shit to you in a funny voice. And so that's kind of the odd extra that I bring to myself because I'm still myself. I'm a very open book and anybody who comes into my room knows I'm honest, I'm to the point, and I'm straight. I will always be straight to you and I will always tell you how I really feel. I can't do anything but that. But I will add a little bit of spice, a little bit of funniness, a little bit of extra kind of personality to it that I probably don't normally bring in my day-to-day -day life because, I don't know, it doesn't come across the same in real life. So 
for me, I would say be yourself, but extra. Like that's, that's what it is for me. But some people are different. Maybe you want to be the sex kitten. Just don't make your voice too high or I'll kill you. (laughs) So Shay, how do you feel about this? Well, this is a tough question. Um, you know, I think that it really depends on which, which sort of route you want to go and who you are in your personal life. Um, I would agree with the kind of being a little something extra, but I think there's also an element of, um, you kind of have to put something up because of what you're doing. It's hard to, you know, fuck yourself 15 times in a night, you know, for any random girl to do, you know, or any normal girl to do, you know, so there is, there is somewhat of a wall and, you know, maybe you're not truly into something, but you know, your customers love it. And so, you know, in order to make them happy, you do it. So, you know, I think that it really depends on what you're looking at and take, take a good look into what you really want to do and how you'll be able to handle it and kind of go from there. And that's one thing that I guess I should say is I, I suit my, my, my privates to my users needs. I am definitely not the same person in a private as I am in the regular show. Unless I know that the person that I'm in the private with likes me how I am, I am more than likely going to be the naggy girlfriend or the innocent girl or the wife or whatever. Like, whatever it is, I kind of have to be in a private. I do put on that persona. But that's because I enjoy role play. If you're not into role play and you just want to slapdash masturbate for guys and do whatever the fuck, cool. Let them know that's what you want to do mm-hmm. so that they're not coming to you for privates and stuff. That's my, that's my only suggestion. You, you, you be as true to yourself as you want to be or be as distant from yourself as you want to be. But know that if you're going to do it full time at some point, the real you is going to come out. Yes. And you want, you, you need to think about how you're going to, you got to use it to your benefit. You don't want to do, use it to your detriment because I see a lot of girls using their real personality and it ends up being a detriment to them because of whatever their either underlying fears are or their, you know, we, we all have issues, but there's a time and a place. And I'm not saying you're not allowed to talk about it on cam, but you've got to pick your time and your place. And if you're a sad girl, who's always a sad girl, who's mean to people and is sad, this probably isn't the job for you. Right. And, or, or, or you got to fucking lay the happy girl on thick and never bring up your personal shit and just be cute and giggle when people ask you personal questions. Yep. That's it. That's, you know, that's pretty, pretty simple shit. It's a lot. It goes back to the thick skin thing. You gotta have mm-hmm. a thick skin. All right, guys. So, um... We have some exciting news for you guys. And I know um, this is this was brought to my attention kind of slyly this last week. Um, but there is a new fetish cam site. And we Finally. are so... Oh my god, we're so excited. Because um, Kink Life left us. And we were also really upset about it. I mean, really just very... I was really hurt to see the website go. I mean, I've always loved kink.com in general. Um... And so I was really, really, really disheartened to see the campsite go. And Shay is currently dying of stroke. Oh, she's burping. Oh, she's burping. Oh, oh, we burped the baby. You better leave that in or I'm coming to your house. Um, yeah. So, no, I mean, I was personally really excited to see this happen. But um, so the website is called My Fetish Live. And it was actually started by two previous cam people from Kink Live. And, I mean, I am super duper excited for this campsite to exist. I mean, just for the simple fact that it started, it's it's homegrown, it's by other cam people. Not to mention the fact that the the rate, the, the percentage that is actually given to cam models, first of all, on just a basic, a basic level, is comparable to Chatterbait, which is really hard to come by, which is 50%. And not only that, but any body you bring into the website with your referral code you make 10 percent of everything they spend on the website and that's the story about that geisha 
So Miss Shay is a hood rat, and we love her. No, I'm just kidding. She likes to masturbate to ladies. I can't help it. She likes ladies. That's why she found love with me is because I got a vagina, you know. Um, No, so Che likes to stare at people's pussies. And so one day she was like, I think I will spend some money on a lady. Now, what I didn't realize was she actually signed up with my fucking referral code and I made money off of her shit. And somebody else signed up with my referral code and spent money. So I have not even legitimately cammed on this website and I have already made money. And that's fucking fantastic. As a cam girl, it is amazing to wake up and have money in your fucking account that you didn't have to do shit for because every goddamn day is clamoring for nickels and dimes. Yeah, and you didn't even, you don't even, we don't even know who the other person is, but they spent quite a bit. They did. They really did. They spent quite a bit of money. They got happy. If you're that motherfucker who signed up my referral code and you spent... $151, $151, please email me. I would like to give you a photo set, please, because thank you. I really, 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 actually really appreciate it. Um, frankly, if any of you sign up with my referral code and spend over $150, I will send you a photo set for free because I really, I actually really, really appreciate that. That is fucking amazing. Um But yeah, no, I am like stupid excited that this website exists. I mean, we're trying to build traffic. So if you're a cam girl and you live on the fetish realm of camming, I highly suggest sign up for my fetish live. Sign up through mine or Shay referrals codes because we really (laughs) love you forever. Um, I don't actually know if they give referrals for models, signing up through models referrals. Um, I don't think they do. I don't think they do, but... If you're a camboy and you like either of us, I know I have a referral code posted on my Twitter, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, the website is fucking phenomenal. Um, it's I've, awesome. I've had the great pleasure of speaking to the great doc, the good doctor. Excuse me. Um, he is one of the guys that he's the guy that created it, and then his um, girlfriend or wife. I'm not. I think. I think their girl, they might be engaged. I don't really know. They're tied to each other. I know they're tied to each other. I know they are, they're like a live in BDSM couple or, uh, it's something I don't want to get too specific. They're, they're in a relationship. Yeah. They, they, those two made the site and I've had the pleasure of speaking to the good doctor. He's an amazing guy. If you have something that you need, um, he specifically added a BBW category for me without asking, just did it, which I thought was like amazing. And whenever I had signed up on the website um, under body type, it was like average, petite, average, and thick. And I asked him, I said, is there any way you can add a BBW to that? And he just did it in like 30 seconds. Um, Very great people. A wonderful website to support and to work on. Uh, I feel extremely at home there. Um, I've cammed on it a few times. I also super want to pimp. They have this app called, it's not their app, but it's Camzy. And essentially, um, you can cam on your phone. So you can take your phone out. You know, if you're on a road trip or whatever, you can literally open the app. You scan a QR code. And then it's always there. You don't have to worry about getting to a computer to find your QR code again. You can cam anywhere you want. Which is absolutely revolutionary. If you aren't a cam person and you're just a fan of cam girls, this is one of the most groundbreaking things I have personally seen in my three years of camming is being able to cam without a laptop. It's actually one of the most frustrating things about going on vacation or even going to shoot porn as a cam person is you don't always really want to bring your laptop because you're only going down there for two days, but you really need to make that extra money going on cam. You no longer have to actually bring a laptop and your entire setup to get on cam and do a show, which is fucking phenomenal. And it just pops up on my fetish life. Nobody even knows that you're on your phone. And the, the phones that we have nowadays, most of them are HD cameras. You can shoot from the front or the back. You can talk. They hear your audio. You can chat. You see their chat. Nobody knows you're even on your phone. It is groundbreaking is, I can't even think of another word, but it just blew my goddamn mind. It's fucking fantastic. So we are actually hoping 
that at some point we will get an interview on one of our podcasts with the good doctor. Hopefully he listens to our podcast and he hears our pleas because we would love, love, love to have him on our show and talk to him because the fact that somebody actually stepped up and really took it upon themselves to bring the community back what they wanted and what they needed and what they are no longer getting is a huge deal. And I, I can't, I can't say enough how much I appreciate somebody really, really taking the time to do that because it was absolutely necessary and I love them for it. We all bitched about it, but two people actually fucking did something about it. And thank you so much. Absolutely. Big, big ups to the good doctor and, Emmy? Amy, I'm such a, Amy. 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 I'm sorry. I didn't have things open. I'm a dickhole. Now it is time for Hearsay. Hearsay, Hearsay. It's a new segment on the Cam Girl Real World where we bring you the hearsay of the Cam Girl stuffs and things. And this week on Hearsay, we have heard some interesting little little peeps about um chatterbait getting a new ranking system there is no definite news on this actually happening but apparently chatterbait has switched over from girls being ranked by absolute viewers to viewers who are registered or or because it's hearsay it might be registered viewers or people who have tokens Shay, how do you feel about this change in the ranking system? I think that it's, I think, well, first of all, I think it depends if it's users with tokens or just registered users. If it's users with tokens, then that really fucking sucks. But if it's registered users, that's awesome. Um, There's also been, well, I'm pretty positive that it's not hearsay, but there are apps um, and bots that have been out there that have been creating literally thousands of anonymous users. Um, we have a screen share, a screen capture of somebody who was on Chatterbait who had over 4,000 anonymous viewers in her room. And how many minutes was she on? Like 14? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's, and just so you guys know that that's really not a realistic number um, for any normal cam girl, it takes approximately 15 minutes to, on a good day, reach about 50 viewers. And and this is coming from somebody who I have, I have over 80,000 followers. Um, I use Twitter. I use Instagram. I, I put out all my resources when I cam. And it can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to reach about 50 users. Um, if you have more, I mean, you know, kind of get, get there exponentially in your brain with your math C's. Um, but you know, it takes time. It's, it's going to take you time to really get to a thousand, let alone 4,000. And it sure as shit is not 14 minutes. So I know I, I'm personally, I'm, I'm really happy to see this. I'm hoping it's not based on token viewers. Cause that's, um, that can be kind of a hardship for people. Um, but registered, actually registered, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down because I, what was the one we, we, we've seen people with like 3000 anonymous viewers. That's not realistic. No, no. And I remember the day that I saw the girl with over four and I can get you the exact number, but she had over 4,000 anonymous users in her room. I said to you, I said, Geisha, what's the biggest number of people you've ever seen in somebody's room? And what yeah. was it that you told me? Like three, four thousand people? Yeah, like maybe maybe a little over four thousand is realistic on like a Saturday at like prime time. Yeah, yeah, but that's been more recent. I mean, before it was you before know three it was, was like mm, three was unheard of. I would I would say low two thousands. I mean, I I was on cam and this was this was like three years ago, but I. I, I ended up being the one cam room left alive during a crash, and I had 1,100 people in my room. And all of 1,100 people that were in the room were talking. Damn. So, like, like, really, you know, who knows how long these apps or bots or whatever have been running for to do this. Yeah, and I remember you saying about 4,000, and I said, Geisha, there's this chick who has 4,000 anonymous viewers. And we had heard about this so-called bot or whatever prior, and we were just like, and we went through the top, you know, two rows, and it was 3,000, you know, 
2,500 anonymous users. And it's like, how is all of a sudden the top page has, you know, 10,000, 20,000 anonymous viewers on it? And and now we're not saying this to be jealous hard asses. I mean, these are people that are relatively unknown, have no more than 10,000 followers, haven't been camming for more than a couple of weeks. I mean, really aren't a huge hitter in the actual cam world. And the big hitters who've been on Chatterbait for a long time, they're in the 600s and the 700s viewer wise. And that's, that's pretty realistic. I mean, in my day, we used to walk uphill both ways in the snow and we only had 700 viewers in the goddamn room. We were grateful. I mean, I hate to like bring it back old school, like fucking three years ago, but I'm, I'm being realistic here. Like this is having 700 fucking people in your room was a huge deal you made it past 500 people i don't give a fuck if you if you have 5,000 users in your room congratulations i am thrilled for you but whenever three to four thousand of those are anonymous viewers that's bullshit yeah Yeah. it's rude and disrespectful to the other models yeah because you're you're making us all look shitty and not in a cool way and the only thing there's only one of two things is going to happen, and I'm really hoping it's the hearsay thing, which is Chatterbait's going to get rid of the ability to have that, or we're all going to fucking learn how to do that. We're all going to have 3,000 fucking viewers in our room, and we're going to edge out the market for the new people, and that's completely fucked up. Yeah, oh, extremely. We're, we're going to edge out any new people who fucking are trying to enter the market, and that's not cool, guys, you bitches. <laughs> like, like I'm sorry. It's just not. So fucking stop it. Chatterbait's getting your ass. Hopefully, hearsay style. Hearsay. I don't know. All right. So now it's time for fun stuff, guys. Here we're gonna talk about the fluff and the puff and the things we want you to know about. It's like the news, but just the commercials. Don't you dare turn off this podcast because I will come to your house and set your panties on fire. We're going to talk about some fun shit. Um, the first thing we're going to actually talk about, you guys, is we're going to start our... We're, we're starting um, a weekly cam and yam. Um, I know. We're funny. We think of names for stuff. Don't be an asshole. Um, a cam and yam. So what we're trying to do is we're actually going to start setting up, um, like, not Skype dates, but sort of. It's we want to We want to start a community discussion between... The cam people and our cam family and really be able to talk about our days and our lives and our weeks and our months and how things are going and how we're feeling about the community that is the cam world. Um, if you're interested, we would love to have anybody. Um, it's a come as you are, come in your PJs, come with no makeup, be yourself. Um, we really, we really just want to kind of extend our arms and give people a place to come and talk about their jobs because we know that you can't come always come to your mom or your best friend or your sister about this type of thing just because we we work in an interesting industry and I know that a lot of people are ashamed for it and it's really sad because there are a lot of us that do this for a living and because it is so cutthroat it is kind of hard to make friends but we're extending ourselves to be friends with you guys um and we hope you join us. If you're at all interested, uh, you can message me on Twitter at GaishaMonroe.com. On my website, GaishaMonroeXXX.com. You can contact Shay at... Uh, Shay at ShayBBW um, on Twitter or ShaySSBBW at Yahoo.com. And don't forget about our website, which is the camgirlrealworld.com, where we do have a contact form. And I think, doesn't Cam Girl Real World have a Twitter? It's at camgirlrw, which really sucks, but they wouldn't let us have, we were one letter too much for Cam Girl Real World. So, there you go. Now, I, I am going to let Shay. Shay's got something special that she is actually trying to to get to somebody um to to anybody really and it's it's uh Shay's Shay's selling her squirt maker. Shay, tell us a little bit about your squirt maker. 
Well, it is my oldest dildo that I still have. I've had it for seven years. Um, it is my favorite dildo. I have, about four years ago, I rode the suction cup off of it. <laughs> that should tell you. Um, <laughs> it was well loved and well used. It has been well loved and well used. It's still in, in good condition. Um, what I would like to do is send it off in a private with someone. Um, and the reason why I'm getting rid of it, rid of it is because I have found the exact same one online. Um, but I would like the suction cup back. And, um, <laughs> I want my family back. I want my family back. <laughs> and, um, I love this dildo. It is amazing as it's, I am a big fan of really large toys and it's actually not a large toy. Let me see how big it is here. About six and a half inches. Which so, is fairly normal. Yeah. It's so a it's a normal dildo. It's a normal dildo. So if you are interested in the squirt maker, um, you can just buy it. You can buy it with a private. You, um, it can come clean or squirted on or however you would like it. But um, I would like fresh to... Fresh out the butt. Fresh out the butt. <laughs> um, it has never been in my butt. But God damn it, if you want me to put it in my pooper for you, <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> But I think that uh, she's she's been in almost all. I like how I call my dildo a she. <laughs> <laughs> my dildo has been in almost every single video I've ever done, um, and I'd like to send her off to somebody that would love her. Isn't that just precious? It's just so precious. It's just it's her baby, and you know, fucking adopt. Adopt the dildo and give it a goddamn home, you heartless fucking assholes. You don't have to feed it, water it, or put it anywhere special. Just love it and look at it or lick it sometimes. I don't know. Sniff it. Who gives a shit? Just buy it. Come on. Don't be an <laughs> asshole. Bye. Bye, Shay's Squirt Maker. Now, I have a very special message to tell y'all guys about. Let me put on some Sarah McLaughlin and show you pictures of puppies. Oh, um, Lord. Uh, <laughs> I, so, um, if you at all follow me on chatter, but you probably seen that I'm actually running a raffle. Um, I did this last year and I'm really sad I wasn't able to go last year, but I am running a raffle to try and get my ass to the adult entertainment expo and the adult webcam awards this January, 2016. Um, and buying raffle tickets will really, really, really help me go. I'm kind of like a kid selling a candy bar in your neighborhood, except there is a really great chance that you can actually win a ticket to the Adult Entertainment Expo, and you can meet me and other awesome cam girls at the Adult Entertainment Expo at the Chatterbait booth. Um, so the tickets are actually 80 tokens a ticket. If you would like to buy them off of Chatterbait elsewhere, um, I do upgrade, um, tickets a little bit, just depending. Um, but I'm really in need of you guys helping support me so I can actually buy my way there. And I would really, really gazoom tight. Appreciate it. I you dropped know, my sneezed. big black dildo. Oh, I <laughs> you sneeze. I didn't even see you. I just thought you sneezed really hard. My suction cup dildo was on the side and I poked it and it fell over. <laughs> <laughs> we are business ladies and these are the things that happen during our podcasts um yeah so fucking buy some raffle tickets have a nice time there are also three prizes even if we don't reach the grand prize level i am giving away um a dvd i'm giving away photo sets i'm giving away signed photos i will send you goddamn christmas cookies okay i'll do an early drawing for christmas cookies if i fucking have to get you guys to buy in um, but I would just really appreciate it. Being a cam model is a very hand to mouth situation and all of the help that you can give me is necessary. Yes, big dildo dropper. I also hear that Geisha is selling um, cum pops. I'm scared to sell cum pops. Okay. I know. I, no, I, I mean, no, no, it's fine. Um, I have an influx. I currently have an influx of lots and lots of lollipops because I had no Halloween trick-or-treaters. So I'm currently actually throwing around the idea of putting my female ejaculate fluid slash creamy centered vaginal goodness on lollipops and sending them to people. And actually, I've had a lot of people tell me it's hot. So if you're interested in buying a cum pop, um, I will, um, I'll, I'll rub the lollipop on my cooch after I cum which will make it extra special. And then I'll shrink wrap it and I'll mail it to you for the measly fucking sum of 
500 tokens. Um, and maybe I'll throw in a signed photo if I'm feeling generous that day and you don't act like a dickhole when you come in and ask for a cum pop. It's the cum pop special. Get it while it lasts. <laughs> come I'll get even it. Like, come I, get it while it lasts. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually, I'll even let you pick the fucking flavor of the lollipop if you really have a preference or aversion to apple or watermelon or whatever. Just, just just come in and talk to me about cum pops and I'll let you pick one and I'll put it down there and just see what happens. We get really weird at the end of our podcast because we don't like saying goodbye. <laughs> so we're going to tell you guys to fuck off and eat a dick this week. We are so happy to be back. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We hope you giggled. We hope you had a nice time and we hope really really sincerely you didn't shit your pants <laughs> so have an awesome fucking week and do the things we told you to do in the podcast god damn it god damn it god damn it have an awesome fucking whatever day it is bitches later <laughs> <laughs>